Hi everyone, welcome back to Grace and Glory Homeschooling. Today I'm going to be talking about comparing language arts curriculum. I have over a dozen different curriculums here that I'm going to go through and I've seen lots of other homeschool um, curriculum reviews on YouTube talking about language arts, but for some reason they would fail to mention a few of the ones that I would want to see. So I thought I would be sure to include ones that are not normally included in reviews. And um, when you look at language arts, it's kind of like this big river. And before you jump into this rushing river and decide where's the path it's gonna go and what direction is it headed, you really wanna be sure that that river, that, that path that you're going down, it aligns with your philosophy of homeschooling, with the goals that you have for your children, because you can quickly and easily get going in the wrong direction and you're just going down and it's flooding too fast and it's hard to stop and then go, okay, now I need to turn around and go a completely different direction in this river. And so I just hope that by sharing, um, a little peek into some of these curriculums and some of the things that I've learned over the past 12 years. Maybe it can help you um, as you're standing on the side of that riverbank to say, okay, before I jump into this river, you know, what direction do I want to go? Or maybe, you know, you're already headed one direction and you're, you're like, okay, no, I really need to stop and I need to change directions. So maybe by getting a look at these and kind of seeing the pros and cons of different programs, it might help you to decide how you can reroute um, or if you're just starting out, how to get started on the right path. There are so many different ways that you can go with language arts. And um, it's not always about <clears throat> one being right or wrong, it's what's right for your family. What is gonna fit your individual children's needs? Because that's some of the beauty of homeschooling is to be able to customize to do what your child needs and to be able to help them um, learn in the best way that God designed them to learn. So I have here mostly um, the younger elementary levels of all these curriculums. And so I'm gonna be speaking about those levels specifically. The first one that I wanna share about is Bob Jones University. This is the newest edition of their first grade phonics and English um, program for teaching children how to read and an intro to grammar and how to write. Um, the first thing that I will say about this is that it is a large set of books. So you're gonna need the work text, which is a pretty thick book, um, perforated pages that the kids tear out. There's going to be a front side and a back side every day, five days a week of what kids need to do. You'll see it's colorful. There are cartoons and it's sprinkled with Jesus all throughout. But they would be doing a page front and back in the work text. They would be doing a page front and back in activities, which is like reinforcement. And um, the same concept, whatever they learned in their lesson, is going to just be more activity pages. And so technically think about your child doing uh, four pages um, per day, five days a week. So you're gonna have these two books. And then along with it, you have part one, this hefty, huge teacher's guide. This is only gonna get you to December. And then you have part two. So this is all you need. And this is only for phonics and English, and this is only for one year. And this doesn't include your spelling, this doesn't include your reading, um, your math. If you were to get all of those together, Bob Jones curriculum is hefty and it's big, and it takes up a lot of room in your house. So something to keep in mind um, before you jump in that path. They do put an emphasis on critical thinking. So that's a plus. They do really try and promote a love for learning. They try to make things enjoyable. They are at an accelerated pace, a little bit ahead of like the traditional public schools, but not so much as other curriculums. I would say that they're not, you know, pushing them at a difficult rate, but if your child is struggling in language arts, they would probably struggle at the pace. So to think about first grade, they introduce um, full writing, drafts, paragraphs, um, grammar, and phonics all at the same time. So it's not like you're just teaching the child how to read, you're teaching them how to compose and how to do grammar at the same time. And it's woven and Bob Jones, I would say is very strong in their writing compared to other curriculums. They really, really do focus on writing. And for better or for worse, <laughs> 
their teacher's manuals um, that you would get at home are the same ones that you would get in a Christian school. And so for a lesson, you're going to see so much content. So here is the introduction and the skills that you're gonna focus on. This is a copy of the student's page right here. Down the side are things that you need to say, uh, materials and things that you need to prep. Um, you're gonna have charts and visuals and things that go along with the lesson and you need to be reading ahead and you need to be planning ahead so that you can be a little step ahead of your students to know what you need to tell them. It's not like you can just hand them the sheet and say, okay, here, go ahead, finish the sheet. No, you really got to um, teach the content. And so this is what I would call teacher intensive. Um, there's objectives, there's songs. This is just for one side of one page. Then you're gonna flip it over. You're gonna work on word families and sight words and vocabulary and um, different chants and different exercises. And that's just for the second side of that page. Then you're still on the same lesson. You're gonna have to flip over again and you're gonna have to do more work to complete the front and back side of the activities page. So it's something that when I have taught this curriculum, I have to sit down on a weekly basis and I have to go through and I have to prepare myself and know and I would highlight what I need to teach. And if you're wanting something full and rich that a child would receive in a classroom and you're wanting to bring the classroom home, if you want school at home experience, this is gonna do it for you. Um, one thing that I will say that was stressful for me personally is that if we happened to have a sick day or if we took a field trip, it was very difficult to catch up on the lessons because there was so much work. Think about it, you had four pages, two pages front and back, so four sheets that my child would need to do, and that's just in one subject. So if you're doing six subjects and you're trying to catch up, that can be really overwhelming if you miss a day. And so part of the thing that I love about homeschooling is to have freedom and flexibility that if we really want to take off and go to a nature center for the day and study outside and not study with the books, I want to be able to do that. And I felt it was difficult and it, it made me stressed when I was doing Bob Jones. As as much as I absolutely love the content, I think it's a really good foundation and it's solid, it doesn't leave a lot of room for flexibility. So BJU Press, you can check that out if you're definitely looking for something that is school at home. Another curriculum that is often compared to Bob Jones is the Abeka curriculum. And I have done that with my older kids. I have not done it with my younger one. And it is um, again, a very much school at home, textbook, workbook based curriculum. I'm gonna show you an old edition of language arts. So this is first grade, and this was one that is not the current edition, but it will show you, this is writing, language, um, spelling, and sounds, and all the different things that you need. The teacher's manual would give you a daily plan and it's just kind of a box of what you need to have and what you need to know and what you would be um, giving them, what page number they need to have, what chart they might need to have, anything that you need to have is in this. And so for language arts, this is first grade, there was language one, which was a seat, a seat work and they would do a page front and back. And then there was letters and sounds teaching them the phonics and then we'd do another page front and back. I would say this is a little more open and go than Bob Jones. You can hand your child the sheet and if they're on track and if they're doing well with it and they're really understanding it, you don't have to take a long time explaining it. To me, there's not a lot of critical thinking. There's not a lot of thinking, in fact, at all on the child's part. It's a lot of filling in the blanks and you look at it, you're gonna circle something and um, it's really, the kid figuring out um, what does the teacher want for me to do? What is this page asking me to do? Okay, I'm just gonna circle it. I'm gonna find the rhymes. I'm gonna find the things that I need to do. And it took my kids, you know, very short amount of time to do these. Um, all my kids thought it was a little bit babyish that the cartoons and the illustrations were kitty. And, um, <laughs> kind of condescending in a way, but there is parts of Jesus sprinkled all throughout Abeka. It is a Christian-based curriculum. I wouldn't say that like the lesson offers any in-depth 
Bible knowledge at all, but it is like sprinkled with parts of Jesus all throughout it. And so they do keep at least a full grade, I would say, above traditional public school. So your child, the concepts that they're doing are going to be kind of ahead um, of the norm, but it's not really challenging them to think in depth. They're just able to follow the concepts that are probably not yet covered by their public school friends, if that makes sense. Um, Abeka is much cheaper than Bob Jones. The books are smaller. And so um, I feel it's a little bit more popular, but it's not something that I would say is a huge difference as far as what your goal would be. For both of them, your goal is that you want to do school at home. You don't want to have a homeschooling lifestyle. You want to have school at home, a classroom at home. That's not a good or bad thing. That's just whatever works for your family. Now, I'm gonna shift a little bit into more of the homeschool style language arts and specifically Charlotte Mason. There is classical, there is unit study, there's so many different methods of homeschooling, but we have um, been a Charlotte Mason style homeschooling family for many, many years. And so I have different curriculum that is Charlotte Mason style. And I'm gonna show you the contrast from the school at home style. One right here for language arts is called Simply Grammar. This is an illustrated primer. You're gonna notice right off the bat that the images are early 1900s, uh, vintage Victorian photos, everything's black and white. This is also um, not consumable. So this is not a workbook that you hand to your child. This is something that you would go and sit on the couch and you would read it together and all of your grammar is language-based. You are learning to compose orally and you are learning to memorize and to digest things orally before actually putting it on paper. The Simply Grammar Primer is recommended for grades fourth through high school. Huge grade span here. This could be for somebody just starting out or it could be for an older child who is struggling with grasping the grammar concepts. Something I want to really point out, though, is the wording. When you go into a Charlotte Mason style of education and you get into Charlotte Mason style materials, a problem that I often find and run into is that this old fashioned wording is really difficult for kids in 2020. So I'm just going to show lesson one. The very first intro to it says words put together so as to make sense form what is called a sentence. Barley, oats, chair, really good and cherry is not a sentence because it makes no sense. So if you stop right there, instead of saying a sentence is a complete thought, they're saying words put together so as to make sense. It's difficult for the modern child. Barley, oats, my kids might say, what on earth is barley, oats? Unless you're living on a farm, you might not know what that is. So it's just different wording. Things are spoken, um, you could say eloquently or properly, and maybe that's a goal for your child, but it could also be a hindrance because you might have to be re-explaining things in modern terms because they're just trying to teach you what a sentence is and you wanna orally discuss how to create a sentence properly, but they're doing it in a very vintage manner. So um, just because Charlotte Mason was an educator in the early 1900s, her methods are amazing, but that doesn't mean that it necessarily has to be taught that way in 2020. So for me, I love her methods and there's a lot of things that I treasure in her words, but I also know it was written for that time. It was written for the time that she was teaching. So some people really want to keep that time period and that focus and bring it into their children's education today. If you don't, that's something that you would wanna be aware of when looking at something like Simply Grammar. Um, a different company that offers Charlotte Mason style homeschool uh, language arts is called Queen Homeschooling. Theirs is a little bit more modern. This one is called um, Language Lessons for the Elementary Child. So this is actually a workbook Charlotte Mason style. Charlotte Mason didn't really use workbooks, but this is like putting it into um, a workbook format. And it's also called an informal course. So this is going to be a very casual course to Charlotte Mason style 
language arts. But I will say I feel that it is a little bit more applicable to kids today. It's going to include copy work, dictation, short grammar exercises, um, short composition exercises, picture study, and some of it is a little bit more relevant to kids today. Some of it still is not totally relevant. Um, the picture study is often of farm animals, old fashioned photos. <laughs> My kids would say, um, where's that? What is that? I don't know what that. And so unless you're on a sheep farm now today, you might not fully um, have your child relating with these pictures or you might not find that your child actually cares about these pictures. Um, but I will say that when it comes to things like alphabetizing, studying verbs, it's very straightforward, it's black and white, and it gets the job done quickly in the short lessons that Charlotte Mason um, suggests. So here's just one little sample of looking for adjectives and nouns in the workbook. The upright piano sits in the middle of a large room. So you're going to circle large because that's the adjective and room because that's the noun. A piano sitting in a room can still apply to today. So I feel like this one is a little bit more applicable um, than the Simply Grammar Primer. These books run about $20 a piece. They are consumable. Each child will need their own. They'll use them in a year. Something that I really liked about these is because the lessons are so very short, if we needed to take off for the day and do something and we needed to skip the book work and we were gonna be out in the field, it was very easy to make up the work the next day. I didn't have to worry about it because the lessons are so short. You will see just this part is lesson 61 and this part is lesson 62. So we could just do the whole page easily on a Tuesday if we skip school on a Monday and we went out for a field trip. So that's something that I liked that it is customizable. Um, there is no table of contents. You don't actually know what your child will be studying unless you want to flip the entire book. That has always been something that's a little puzzling to me. I wish there was a table of contents, but there is not when it comes to Queen homeschool supplies. Just something to keep in mind. Another Charlotte Mason classical style language arts are the language lessons for today. This is specifically a version produced by my father's world company. They start in second grade and go from there. They took the original 1900 um, old version of Emma Searle's primary language lessons and they revised it and um, significantly updated it and made it into a non-consumable spiral bound book. So the child actually doesn't write in these. You can use it with multiple students. It's pretty short and this is going to have Again, copy work, picture study, narration, works on oral composition, and light, light sprinkle of grammar um, starting in second grade. This is only done two to three days a week, so it is something that it gives you plenty of time if you want to read lots of books, which is something that is in the Charlotte Mason um, education. The picture study is a little bit better to me. These are things that are a little bit more relevant to kids in 2020. So when you're looking at this, it's not quite so, um, you know, old people at the farm. <laughs> it's a little bit better than that. Um, I did notice just going through the very first week of lessons. Um, the first week you are going to look at a picture of a squirrel. You're going to orally compose a story about a squirrel. You're going to read a poem about a squirrel. You're going to look at is and are and decide what sentences about the squirrels fit properly. But this is the entire lesson that you would verbally go through. Again, very short. And so um, it's something where you're going to have to trust that as the child develops, you will increase more. And as they read good books, um, their knowledge of grammar and their knowledge of composition will increase. If your child really needs more grammar review and really needs um, literal practice, they're going to need something in addition to this. But this is only $20 and it's only a couple days a week, so it would be easy to supplement if you like this and want to add more to it. Another Charlotte Mason style curriculum is called Using Language Well. This is by simplycharlottemason.com. This coordinates spelling and grammar and writing all in one. 
This is um, the student book. This is the teacher guide. And the spelling book that goes to it, I actually have the ebook version, so I don't have it here to show you. It's called Spelling Wisdom. And what it does is it uses a passage of scripture or a poem um, or a famous quote from something um, from something like the Christmas Carol. Um, and they will then dissect that. You will see what words your child needs to learn how to spell out of that Bible scripture. Where are the nouns and verbs out of that Bible scripture? Where, uh, what kind of story could you develop? What is the moral and the meaning of it? It is um, a very thought provoking, critical thinking, deep curriculum. It's not a fill in the blank. It's what do you think? What do you think this means? Um, so that can be a pro or a con. I would say if I was starting off and I was a brand new homeschooler, that might overwhelm me, especially if I wasn't good in language arts, or if I didn't have a deep knowledge of the Bible, I might not understand the scripture myself. And so if my child didn't understand the depth of the scripture, it might be hard for me to explain to my child what the depth of the scripture means as we dissect the scripture. But if you have a strong knowledge of the scriptures or you understand it, then you would be able to explain it. And the teacher guide is an answer key. It really does give you the answers for what you're looking for. So you don't have to find them yourself. But I know for me, there were certain lessons that it wasn't enough just to have the answer. I needed to be able to explain to my children how we got to the answer. So I'm gonna show you um, a sample from lesson 42 right here. And so it says, read the exercise and then tell who is speaking and what is being said about this person. One sentence in this exercise says, gaily dressed folks filled the streets. This is something that is not language that we use today in 2020. My kids would not know what gaily dressed means. They would probably start giggling and hee 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 over that word. And then I would have to explain to them the context of the time period and what it meant. And then they're supposed to transcribe it. So in this certain case, you might run into the problem that the children focus on gaily dressed folks in the street more than focusing on who is speaking the time period and why they're saying it. And really, does that help them learn their grammar or does that actually inhibit them um, and become a stumbling block in their grammar because they're focused on this old fashioned way of speaking. So it doesn't happen always. You might be you know, dissecting a proverb. There's all different types of exercises, but it's just something to keep in mind. Um, it's another Charlotte Mason language that um, often refers back to older times. And although it's very simple to use, it's only a few days a week, um, the lessons are very short, but you're going to have to look at things that might not be applicable for children in 2020. Lastly, something that I feel ties a little bit together of everything that I've already showed you is Masterbooks Language Lessons for a Living Education. It is Charlotte Mason inspired, kind of flavored with Charlotte Mason, but it's still a textbook and there are still traditional elements to it. This is the second grade book and you will see that it is a five day a week program, but every day is doing something different. So you're going to have a story that you read and then you're going to do some grammar practice. You are going to do some writing practice and then you're going to have um, some creative exercising where you're going to tell a story or write a story or share with someone and then you're going to practice your spelling words. So this is a little bit of a mix. It's not completely textbook. It's not completely Charlotte Mason. It is a lot more applicable, I would say, for kids in 2020. There's going to be modern language. There's going to be examples that apply to their life today and it's going to require some thinking. Sometimes one day you might do filling in the blanks, 
But then the next day, you're going to have to come up with a story and share what do you think about this and why do you like this and what is your favorite this. So it's kind of like rotating back and forth to different styles, um, all mixed together and swirled together. There is no separate teacher's book. All the teacher helps are in the back. And so you can just take those out and this is all one. So it does condense it for your writing, your composition, your grammar, your spelling, everything in one. Something that I've often heard about master books curriculum, especially their language and math, is that it is quote unquote behind. It is a much more gentle approach. And I would say it is, yes, behind what the traditional public schools are doing. But if your goal is not to duplicate what the public schools are doing, if your goal is not to bring school into your home, if that's not your goal, then you really shouldn't be worried about when your child learns what. Just know they will cover it. They will cover the same information that your kids are learning in public school. There's going to be a lot more Jesus involved. There is a lot of Jesus um, and a lot of great biblical strong content in these books, but it's not going to happen at the same pace or at the same speed that maybe your private school friend or your public school friend um, with their children are covering. So that's something that you have to know that you're not trying to keep up with that and you're just going to be completely different and just not worry about it because you're not keeping up with that. So I will say I feel like it is a daily five day a week program, but because every day is different, it would be a little bit easier if you need to make up work because one day might be reading a story, one day might be doing a picture study, and one day might be doing some grammar work. So if you skip a day, okay, so you read a story and you do grammar on the same day. It's not too bad because it's not like having four or five worksheets that you all of a sudden have to catch up on. So that's just something to keep in mind um, that when you're looking at different programs from every day to just a couple days a week, think about how you want to cover all those different things. So I'm going to wrap this up because this video is getting long, but I hope it was helpful to you and I hope you have a blessed day. See you again.